Hello and welcome to our video. Here we'll be showing you the basic concepts of plane curves, space curves and their examples and surfaces. The first question we need to ask ourselves is what is a curve? A curve is a function gamma from the open interval alpha beta to Rn where n is 2 or 3. A smooth curve gamma is a function that can be differentiated infinitely many times. For example, gamma t equals sine t cos t can, can continually be differentiated, so this is smooth. However, gamma t equals 6t 2t squared can only be differentiated three times before it becomes zero. Therefore, this is not smooth. A plane curve is in R2. For example, gamma equals cos t sine t. On the other hand, a space curve is in R3. An example of this is gamma equals cos t sine t T. The tangent is defined as t equals gamma prime from alpha to beta to Rn where n equals 2 or 3. t equals the differential of gamma with respect to t, so gamma prime equals x prime y prime. A curve, gamma, is called regular if and only if the length of the tangent is not equal to zero um, for all t in alpha beta. For example, gamma of t is equal to cos squared t sine squared t. The differential of this is minus 2 sine t cos t and 2 sine t cos t. The length of this is the square root of 8 sine squared t cos squared t. However, of course, the length of the uh, function is 0 when t is minus pi by 2, 0, pi by 2, pi, etc. So this means it's not regular for all t. But if we define t as t within the interval 0 and pi by 2, this means that uh, gamma is regular. Gamma is called unit speed if and only if the length of gamma prime is 1. This is for all t in the interval alpha and beta. For example, if gamma t is cos t sine t, the differential of this is minus sine t cos t, the length of which is the square root of sine squared t plus cos squared t, and we all know that's 1. This is for all t, uh, which is an element of r. So the next question we're going to ask is how much does a curve actually curve? If gamma is unit speed, then kappa of t is the length of the second differential of gamma. If gamma is regular but not unit speed, then for plane curves we can say that kappa is the modulus of the determinant of the first differential of gamma and the second differential of gamma. This is divided by the length of gamma differential uh, cubed. For space curves we can say that kappa is the cross product and well the length of the cross product of gamma differential and gamma double differential and this is over the differential of gamma cubed uh, the length of that. So for our first example, we have gamma written here. And the first question we need to ask is, is gamma regular? 
First of all, we've calculated gamma prime, and then therefore, the length of gamma prime is equal to the square root of sine squared 2t, which is equal to sine of 2t. So from before, we calculated that the length of gamma prime was equal to sine of 2t. This can equal 0 when t is equal to 0, pi over 2, etc. So gamma is not regular for all t in the reals and is not unit speed, but it could be regular if the domain was limited to the open interval 0 to pi over 2. The next question we need to ask is how much does gamma curve? From before we have this equation for kappa and then gamma prime and gamma double prime are calculated here. Then calculating the absolute value of the determinant of gamma prime and gamma double prime and dividing this by the length of gamma prime cubed, which we know from the previous example, means that kappa is equal to 3 over the sine of 2t. If gamma is regular and the curvature is greater than 0 for all t in our given interval, then we can calculate torsion. It is given by the scalar product of gamma prime crossed by gamma double prime and gamma triple prime, all divided by the length of gamma prime cross gamma double prime squared. A slide can have curvature, but it makes torsion to give it fun. Here is our space curve example. Gamma is written here. First we have to ask ourselves, is gamma regular? So gamma prime is then calculated, and gamma, the length of gamma prime is given as the square root of sine squared 2t plus cos squared 2t equals 1. So it's therefore regular and unit speed. Then we need to ask ourselves, how much does it curve? So we can now use this formula for the curvature. Gamma double prime is calculated, so gamma double prime is equal to the square root of 17 minus 9 cos 40 over 2, which is equal to k. Therefore, the curvature is not equal to 0 for all t. Since we know that c the curvature of t is greater than 0, torsion can then be computed. Using this formula we mentioned previously, as it is very cumbersome to calculate, we haven't bothered to show any of the calculations for it, but we know that the torsion is equal to 3 times 41 cos of 2t minus cos of 9 cos of 60, divided by 18 cos of 40 minus 34. Now we'll talk about surfaces. Instead of gamma t, we can write uv of x. Surfaces are usually drawn like this. The example we'll use throughout this is as follows. A surface has a Gauss map which is denoted nx, when u and v are the partial derivatives of x. We have nx is equal to the cross product of xu and xv all over the length of xu cross xv. This is normal at every point on the surface. OK, so here we're just calculating the partial differentials with respect to u and v and the cross product between them both. The first fundamental form is given by uppercase E, F and G, where E is equal to the dot product of the differential of x with respect to u and the differential of x with respect to u. F is given by the dot product of the differential of x with respect to u and x with respect to v, and g is the dot product of the differential of x with respect to v and x with respect to v for a surface u, v of x. The second fundamental form for a surface u, v of x with the Gauss map nx is given by lowercase e, f and g. 
where E is the dot product of the Gauss map and the partial differential of X differentiated twice with respect to U. F is the dot product of the Gauss map and X partially differentiated with respect to U and then V. And G is the dot product of the Gauss map and X differentiated twice with respect to V. These upper and lower case of E, F and G's are called the coefficients of the first and second fundamental form respectively. There are many different curvatures that can be calculated for the surface. Using the coefficients of the first and second fundamental forms, we have that the Gauss curvature has, is given by E times G minus F squared divided by capital E capital G minus capital F squared. And the mean curvature is given by E times capital G minus 2F times capital F plus capital E times G, all divided by 2 times E capital E capital G minus capital F squared. The shape operator A is given by A times I to the minus 1 times 2I where I is equal to uh, capital E, capital F, capital FG, and 2I is given by E, F, F, G. So now using our surface, we can find XU, XV, and the cross product of XU and XV, to find capital E, capital F, and capital G. Then we move on to find our Gauss map, given here. And then we can find xu, xu, xv, xv, xu, xv. And plug those into our equations to find e, g, and f, given by 0, 0, and minus 3. Once we've done this, we can find our shape operator and find the mean curvatures and Gauss curvatures. Thanks for watching!